So today I wanted to talk about a new concept, a different concept, a concept that you probably haven't thought about in terms of translation. And this concept is um, A-B split level testing. Now, this is something that if you do marketing, if you do online marketing, online sales, online marketing, uh, then you've probably come across it, especially if you do stuff like Google ads, Facebook ads, or anything along those lines. But otherwise, you might not have come across it. So let me briefly explain what it is, and then I'll say how it relates to you. A-B split level testing is what, um, you know, a lot of companies will do this, and what they'll do is they'll have an online ad, and uh, so they'll, you know, have an ad say, buy our shoes, and then they'll have another ad that says, uh, click here to buy our shoes. I don't know, just something, you know, different. And then they'll test these two ads and, you know, for a week or whatever it is. And, you know, they'll see which one works better. And if buy our shoes works better, then they'll get rid of the other one and then work on, you know, that one and maybe do another variation on that one. Maybe two different colors or I don't know, something like that. And so this is called A-B, uh, usually A-B testing. That's what it's called because you test it, you know, A and B and see how they work against each other and then you go with whatever works best. Um, and the important thing here is that you don't change more than one thing at a time. So you don't say, okay, I'm doing these ads in New York that says buy our shoes and I'm doing another ad in Chicago that says click here to buy our shoes and the one in New York works best. And you're like, wait, well, does it work best because of the different wording or because it's in New York and, you know, and, uh, and maybe New York has a better market than Chicago. I don't know. Uh, so that's why you only change one thing every time you do this split level test, you know, A or B, that's it. And, uh, and, and whatever small change works best, you go with that. And then maybe you do a test for New York or Chicago on its own and stuff like that. Anyway, that's how it works. And actually, there are a bunch of variations because obviously these big firms that have a lot of money can do all these different things. I won't get into that now. But that's basically the concept of how this works. So how does this relate to you? And why do you care about this? Well, when do we as freelancers, when are we marketing and when are we doing sales? Well, kind of all the time, right? Because a lot of what we do, especially at the beginning, is trying to contact prospective clients. And uh, we're trying to uh, find people who want to hire us. And so, as I mentioned this before, a lot of this can be a numbers game. At the beginning, you might be emailing 10, 20, even more people per day, you know, like these cold contacts or stuff like that, just seeing who you can uh, get as a client and stuff like that. So, so what? Well... So how can we apply this to what we're doing? And, you know, and this goes along the lines of when I try to see what the big boys, what the big companies are doing and try to see how we can try to adapt these, uh, these strategies, you know, to what we're doing so that we can apply the best of what's out there to our jobs as freelancers. And so anyway, uh, the way we can do it here is obviously every one of you, when you're contacting these prospective clients, is that you have an email probably that, you, uh, that you've that you written out, probably a template that maybe you tweak here and there depending on if you're contacting people in different cities and different fields and industries or this, that, and the other. And so what I'm saying here as a, you know, as a, maybe what you can do is a split level test for these emails that you send out. And so how would that work? Well, basically, if you're doing, say, 10 to 20 emails a day, what you can do is you can decide to send half of them using some wording and half of them maybe wording that's a bit different, just slightly different, you know, maybe with a different tone or a different start or maybe in a different order or something along those lines. Anyway, you just test them out and you do that for a week or two and then you kind of look back and see which one got the best response, which one got more people interested and, in, in, you know, in following up. Even if it didn't get you a job, if it got people interested so you could, you know, possibly go through and then see there, there's a possibility for a job, then it might be a good way uh, to, to get potential jobs, especially if maybe the other one didn't get any response or got very little response in comparison. Anyway, this is a way while you're sending these emails out so you're not just writing up an email template and then just sending it out without thinking. So you can kind of keep testing because you should, you should be refining, you should constantly be refining what you're sending out to clients and uh, your wording and all that. I still am right now. And uh, every time I send an email out, I mean, obviously I have all my standard templates and everything I do, but if I find something that I can tweak or change or, uh, you know, amend in a certain way, then, you know, then I want to do it. And the best way to do this is to be scientific about it and to do this testing. Unfortunately, at least for me, and I think for a lot of people out there, 
one of the worst mistakes you can make is to assume. And you assume you're like, okay, well, I'm contacting companies, so of course I need to sound a lot more professional when I do it. That's an assumption. And for all I know, you're right, but you might not be right, you know, and the only way to know is to test it out. And so this AB, AB type testing is perfect for stuff like this, because what you can do is you can send out half the emails sounding a bit more professional and maybe the other one a bit less professional, you know, maybe more cordial or with an exclamation point there or something like that. Anyway, and you can sort of then get an idea of what works best for you. Also remember what works best for me or for someone else might not work best for you. Maybe you are naturally more inclined to be a certain way so it comes off as more natural when you do it or the clients you're contacting tend to be more that one way than the other. You never know. Anyway, and the best way to find out is to test it out and see what works. And so adapting this A-B split level testing is a great way to do just that uh, because over time you can get a feel for what works best and what doesn't. And then maybe once a certain type of email works better, you can get rid of the other one and then test this new type of email. Say, well, maybe I want to add two exclamation points to it, or maybe I want to, you know, do this or that anyway, and, you know, see what works best for you and what type of changes or tweaks or, you know, little small variations you can make to your emails that might help you in the future. And, uh, and this will also keep you on your toes and make sure that you're constantly refining it and trying to make that email a bit better. Anyway, so uh, please let me know if you're able to adapt this. By the way, you can adapt this in other ways as well. If you find yourself sending uh, a personal list of services out or if you have a personal web page, if you're able to create two of them somehow and you know you send half the people to one and half the people to the other, find any way you can to try to test this out. Maybe if you have business cards, try two different business cards. Obviously, you have to pay for two different business cards then. And actually then every time you test, you have to buy a new business card. So maybe that, that one, not so much, but um, you know, any other way you can think of to try to tweak this a bit and try to see what works best, try to do that a bit. And uh, you might be surprised by the results because it isn't always obvious, you know? And uh, anyway, so please feel free to test this out and feel free to let me know if uh, this works and what works best and how it works best for you, because I'd love to hear about uh, stories like this and, uh, and to see if this can work for you. And otherwise, yeah, that's pretty much it for now. Uh, please don't forget to click thumbs up and like if you do like this because that always helps so I know what kind of material works and what doesn't. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.